Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Just like that uh, worship song, it says, Arise. Amen. Arise, Sior. Arise, generation. No longer forsaken. Amen, church. Arise. Hallelujah. Can you tell your neighbors, Arise. Arise, arise, hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. And uh, yes, we welcome each and everyone from uh, Brother Ramon in here to Hodea in there, from Ati Ani to Irene in there, from Zep Zep to Ati Ani in there. Let's welcome each and everyone, my dear brothers and sisters. Let's share the love of the Lord. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And uh, Blessed and happiest. Blessed and happiest fifth year anniversary po sa ating lahat. Amen po. Amen. In behalf of all the brothers and sisters na uh, talaga nga namang from the beginning of time nagtibag po mga kapatid. Amen. From the beginning of time, kung ang isang bahay, kung ang isang tahanan sana nagpapatayo ng bahay, from the beginning of time, from the ground breaking, up until at the moment na itinatayo natin yung limang palapag, sama-sama pa rin po tayo. Amen. Amen. Amen, church. So, to all the uh, the brothers and sisters, to all our visitors, people who are joining us online in behalf of all the lives of the Christ and our Rock Church Ministries International family members, we welcome you. We welcome you to our fifth year church anniversary. Amen po? Amen. Uh, can I encourage, can I invite each and everyone to stand up and let us pray. The word of the Lord in Psalms chapter 90 verse 12 says, Teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Most gracious Lord and Heavenly Father, thank you for all your good countenance. Thank you, Father God, for teaching us to number our days, O God. And so here we are, Celebrating your goodness, Father, for the last five years. And Lord, as we continue to embark our journey on that number six, we say amen on that declaration of faith, Father God, by your servant, that next year we would have been multiplied, Father God. Amen. And Father we continue to dwell in your mercy and grace. We continue, Father God, to take shelter upon your love, upon the power, Father God, that enables us all. So Lord, as we continue to celebrate this fifth year anniversary, we are expectant. We thank you for the word that you have prepared. Open our mind. Open our heart. Open our senses, open our spirit being that we may be able to receive fully our portion today. And Lord, we rebuke whatever absconding mind, we rebuke whatever thoughts, we rebuke whatever works and wiles in the schemes of the enemy that will try to unsettle us, that will try to hinder us, that will try to disturb us today. We apply the blood of Jesus upon each and every one of us, from the youngest to the oldest, Father God, all the people whom you have gathered here today, and also the people who are joining us online, all the people, Father God, that will come across this service at a later times. Lord, thank you, because right here, right now, you have poured forth your victory. You have poured forth your presence in our midst, O God. And all the people of God says, Amen, Amen, Amen. 
Hallelujah. Sige, let's, uh, let's sit down and let's continue to enjoy the grace and mercies of the Lord. And I want to take this wonderful privilege and opportunity to thank the Lord, to thank the Lord for all your lives, mga kapatid. Amen po. This is not just a celebration of anniversary, but this is as well a um, uh, uh, reunion. Amen. This is as well reunion. Sabi nga ni uh, Brother Alan kanina, Can we give a clap offering to the Lord for the lives of our brethren from Bordon? Hallelujah. And so us, the lives of our brethren here in Alton, the lives of our brethren in Aldershot, the lives of our brethren in Basingstoke, the lives of our brethren in Bournemouth. Amen. The lives of our brethren from the Philippines from our Nepali friend community. Amen. And obviously, from the people from, oh, Farnham. Hey, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Sari, Sari si, ano, di ba? Si Jemima. From Sari. Amen. Wow. Hallelujah. Glory to God in the highest. Are we excited, church? You know, coming here today, you have already invested much in your future. Coming here today, my dear brothers and sisters, you have already invested much in your future. And just like each and every investment, it is not enough to just simply put an investment. What do we need to do? We need to work out on it. Amen, church? In every investment, we need to work out on it. And coming here, especially to the visitors, responding to that invitation, you have already made a remarkable investment for your future today. In short, coming here today, people online joining us here today, in short, is an act of wisdom. In short, a wise decision. Amen, church? Hallelujah. The Bible, as we know, is comprises of 66 parts. And to the youth, tinuro dati ni uh, Tito Dani last time, the books in the Bible, sana yung mga youth, diba, binigyan pa kayo ng uh, mnemonics on how to remember it easily. Kailangan mo yata ang ano, ituro ulit pag may time ka. Yun na. Invite natin. Kailangan niyang ituro ulit pag may time siya. Amen. Hindi lang yung youth, pati yung mga thunders, kailangan ding. <laughs> kailangan ding. <laughs> Matuto. So the Bible is, uh, is comprised of 66 different parts or we call them books. And my dear brothers and sisters, just as everyone, each and every one of us has a favorite book. Amen? Just as every one of us have a favorite story perhaps in the Bible. Just as every one of us has a favorite character in the Bible. But my dear brothers and sisters, no, I personally have always been fascinated by the book of Psalms. Psalms in Hebrew, it says in here, Mezmor, which means melody, songs, praises. So you know, when we are singing that song, making melody in my heart, that's actually the definition of Psalm. That's the reason why if we read through Psalms, mga kapatid, what we can find in there, those melodies, those songs, those praises, those worship for the Lord. Every line that we have sung here this morning, 
has originally been taken from the book of Psalms. If you compare the lyrics, my dear brothers and sisters. So to all the brothers and sisters, it is not hidden from you. Hindi po naman kaila sa inyo that I myself personally have a strong inclination towards praise and worship. And we continually encourage the church. We continually encourage the music team. We continually encourage each and every one of you to have a heart towards praise and worship. But when we mean praise and worship, it is more than the melody. When we mean praise and worship, it is more than the song. When we say praise and worship, we mean more than the arrangement that completes to become a lineup, that completes to become a praise and worship lineup. My dear brothers and sisters, people of God, when we talk about praise and worship, I pray, I encourage you, I exhort you, especially those people who are, are given the opportunity and privilege to lead the congregation, to stand in front. I encourage you, my dear brothers and sisters, for the music team, and if you are desiring to jo join the music team, I encourage you to write this passage. 2 Samuel chapter 6, verse 22. Here we can find the greatest king of Israel, no other than King David. Here we can see King David, my dear brothers and sisters, just as those servant and people of God did this morning, King David was singing. King David was jumping. King David was clapping. King David was dancing before the presence of the Lord. With all his might, with all his power, with all his understanding, with all his heart, with all his spirit, is it not that praise in worship is supposed to be like that in the church? I myself has that prayer, has that cry, that Lord, kailan kaya ako makakatayo sa harap to lead the congregation in praise in worship? And guess what? Up until now, hindi pa sinasagot ng Panginoon yung prayer na yun. So mapalad yung mga binibigyan ng Panginoon. Those that the Lord given the opportunity to stand here and lead the congregation. Amen, church. You are not just blessed, but it is a wonderful honor and privilege. Amen, church. And even the people of God, it is a wonderful honor and privilege to be able to gather alongside each other. There are people from this side who does not know some of the people on this side. And yet we are blessed and privileged that the Lord gathered us here today to stand alongside each other, to praise and worship the Lord. Amen, church? So what is our response to that? That every time praise and worship opportunity comes knocking, my dear brothers and sisters, let us praise and worship the Lord with all our might, with all our strength, with all our understanding, with all our heart, and with all our spirit. That can lead us, like King David says, that yes, because as you see, King David was singing, clapping, jumping. Thank you. And King David says that, yes, I am willing to even look more foolish or undignified than this. Even to the point that I can be humiliated in my own eyes or in the eyes of the many. If that's the level 
of praise and worship that glorifies the Lord. Amen, church. So that tells me that when we do praise and worship, it's not about me anymore. It's not about other things. But what I am set forth to do is to honor and glorify the Lord. And that's what Psalms teaches us to do. Amen? I love that in the book of Psalms, my dear brothers and sisters, we can see people praising God. Not just on Sunday, but every day of their lives. Psalms 145 verse 2 and 3, it says in there, I will praise you every day. Yes, I will praise you, Lord, forever. Great is the Lord. He is worthy to be praised. No one can fathom. No one can measure the greatness of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. It says in there, my dear brothers and sisters, that we ought to praise the Lord. Not just on Sunday, but every day on our lives. We ought to praise the Lord. Not just one off during the week, but it is a continuous service. Amen. We ought to praise the Lord when we are feeling down and when we are feeling victorious. We ought to praise the Lord in the morning and in the evening. We ought to praise the Lord when we gather together and when we are alone in our room. We ought to praise the Lord in the midst of trials and tribulation and in the midst of peace and comfort. Hallelujah, church. Amen. Amen. Who have been praising and worshiping the Lord even prior to this morning? From the rising of the sun, the psalmist says, till the going down of the same, the name of the Lord be praise. Tell that to your brother, sister. The name of the Lord be praise. The name of the Lord be praise. Amen, church. In the book of Psalms, we can see that people worship the Lord, that people come to the Lord when they have, they have heaviness. Amen. So here in the book of Psalms, my dear brothers and sisters, it teaches us guidelines and principles that we can apply in our lives. Psalms 119 verse 11 and 12, it says in there, I have hidden your word in my heart that I may not sin against you. I praise you, Lord. Teach me your decrees. Amen. I have treasured your word in my heart. I have hidden your word in my heart. And by hiding your word in my heart, it says in there, I will be far away from sinning. And when I am far away from sinning, I have the reason to praise you. And then it goes back to the beginning, teach me your statutes. My dear brothers and sisters, praising and worshiping the Lord is a cycle. Amen. In order for one to be able to treasure, in order for one to be able to hide the word of the Lord in their heart, they must first have to learn that word, to learn that statutes. They must first have to hear the word of God. And when you hear the word of God, my dear brothers and sisters, it is very important that we receive it. And when we receive it, we do not just simply receive it, but it says, hide it in your heart. Hiding it in your heart meaning applying it in our everyday lives. Amen, church? Because as we apply it in our everyday lives, sabi niya rito, we will be far from sinning. Because there is always that constant reminder. 
Amen, church. I also love in the book of Psalms about its honesty. Here we can see people who are pointing out their hearts to God when they have troubles or problems. Psalms 56, 3 and 4, it says in there, When I am afraid, I put my trust in you. To you, O God, whose word I praise. To you, O God, I trust and I am not afraid. What can mere humans do to me? What can mere mortals do to me? So my dear brothers and sisters, here in the book of Psalms, it comes with honesty. It comes with that realization. You know, my dear brothers and sisters, when we are going through trials, troubles, tribulation, in which the Lord says, in this world, you are going to go through many and plenty of this. And my dear brothers and sisters, the book of Psalms, helps us to be honest, helps us to realize that, Lord, I am not in control. Lord, this problem, this trial, this tribulation is wearing me off. Lord, this pain is unbearable. Lord, hindi ko na kaya. That's the reason why the book of Psalms says, when I experience all this, when I encounter all this, there is only one way. I will trust in you. Amen. I will trust in you. I will come to you because you are my only hope. Amen. You are my only hope. But my dear brothers and sisters, wag na nating patagalin. The most crucial part of Psalms that I want to share to you. The most important part of Psalms that if we miss it, if we did not understand it, my dear brothers and sisters, we are in a very difficult and troublesome situation. The most crucial part for me, the most important part of Psalms, I believe for me, is Psalms chapter 90. It's a shorter Psalms than others because it only has 17 verses comparing to other Psalms that have hundreds of verses. And the interesting thing is, it's written by Moses. Say, if you read the book of Psalms chapter 90, in the heading, it says in there, the song of Moses or the prayer of Moses. So the reason, my dear brothers and sisters, that I find Psalms number 90 very crucial is that it teaches us about being wise. Ano po yung kabaliktaran ng wise? foolishness. And if I am to ask you to choose only but one thing, would you choose to be wise or would you choose to be foolish? Anyone, church? This row, would you want to be foolish or wise? wise. Louder? Wise. How about this row? Foolish or wise? Again? Wise. This row? Wise. Hallelujah. We want to be wise. And Psalms chapter 90 teaches us exactly, my dear brothers and sisters. Amen? Before we go, how this chapter 90 teaches us to be wise, I want to ask you, what is the idea of this world? on how to live wisely. Men's, ito yung motto natin dati. This is the motto that men's share. Being wise. In heaven, there is no beer. That's why we apply, 
wisdom in living by drinking here. Di ba? Yun po yung wisdom ng mundong ito. In heaven, there is no beer. That's why we need to apply wisdom by drinking here. This world teaches us that life is precious. So we must enjoy every moment it, of it by eating, drinking, and being merry. Kumain tayo, uminom tayo, at magpakasasa. But Romans chapter 14, verse 17, it says in there that the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace, joy in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Amen, church. The wisdom of this world teaches us that time is gold. So what do we do with gold? We mine it. Minahin natin. That's the reason why na every given day, kailangan nating magtrabaho. Because time is gold. Kailangan nating minahin yung time na yan. But the word of the Lord says, Can you please allocate the Sabbath for me? The word of the Lord says, I'm allowing you to work six days a week. But will you be able to offer me that seventh day? Anyone, my dear brothers and sisters, how about you? What are your advice when it comes to wisdom? Anyone? Actually, I've got an idea. Let's uh, ask the most favorite now. Hey Siri, what is the meaning of life? Maybe the meaning of life is to find meaning in life. If you find things in life that mean something to you, then you're probably on the right track. Did you notice that? There's a lot of maybe and there's a lot of probably. Ano yung ibig niyang sabihin doon? Siri is not even sure. Siri is not even sure. What is the meaning of life? I don't know if you have Alexa, try it later and compare who is wiser between the two. But my dear brothers and sisters, what does the Bible say? What does the Bible say about living wisely? In Psalms chapter 14 verse 1, it says in here, The foolish says in his heart, There is no God. So when someone, my dear brothers and sisters, the scripture clearly tells us that when someone is walking, when someone is living, when someone amongst us tells in their heart that there is no God, the Bible says that that person is not living wisely. That that person is foolish. That's what the scripture says. Do we agree with the scripture? Amen? So friends, brothers and sisters, people online, this is not my word. This is the word of God. If you walk and you tell your heart that God is not true, God is not real, there is no God, and the Bible calls you foolish. If you are to ask me, I'll call you friend because we don't want to fall out. But if you ask me what does the Bible say, it's a foolishness to say that there is no God. Amen. How can we say that there is no God when God clearly revealed himself to us from the beginning of time up until eternity? My dear brothers and sisters. Amen. Wag po sana tayong mabuhay na walang pagkilala sa Panginoon. Dahil the Bible calls us foolish. You know the most intelligent British, especially of this new era, anyone? Maybe Andrew knows it. You know the most intelligent British of this new era? Stephen Hawking's. 
Stephen Hawking. He is the most famous physicist and scientist of this time, of his time. Sadly, he does not believe in God. Sadly, he died trying to explain a different explanation to creation other than what the Bible says. My dear brothers and sisters, do you want to meet Stephen Hawking? If you are to ask me, I don't. Who wants to meet Stephen Hawking here? Anyone? You want to meet Stephen Hawking? I pray that you don't. Say it again. Yeah, he passed away already where he is. Where is he? Where is he now? If he did not believe in God? Where? He is in hell. And if you meet Stephen Hawking, that means that you are in? So I pray that you won't meet him. Luke chapter 12, verses 16 to 21. Ito po yung the parable of the sower. Are we familiar with the story? The parable of the sower. Luke chapter 12, verses 16 to 21, my dear brothers and sisters. The ground of a certain man produces a good crop. He thought to himself, what shall I do? I have no place to store up my crops. Stop working. Kapag nakikita mong yung bank mo is exploding, stop working. Come to church. Amen. Hallelujah. Huwag niyong problemahin kung saan tayo mag-open ng pangalawang bank account o kung kaninong bank ko tayo mag-open. If your bank account is exploding, stop working. Come to church. Give your time to the Lord. Amen. He said, What is it that I will do? I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones. And there I will store up all the grains in my goods. And I'll say to myself, You have plenty of good things laid up for you. Until the main years to come. Take life easy. Be merry. Eat and drink. But God said to him, You fool, this very night, your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? This is what it will be with anyone who stores up for himself, but is, is, it, it, he is not rich towards the kingdom. So my dear brothers and sisters, magsalamin po tayo. Let's look at the mirror and again, I encourage and I pray na hindi natin makita, we cannot see na kawangis natin itong mayamang rich young man na ito. Amen. Because this is the type of person who pl plan for everything. Who plan for their life, who plan for their investment, who plan for their future, who has complete health and Medicare, but did not prepare for their eternal life. This is the type of man who pampered this physical body. This is the type of man who filled and satisfied this physical body, but neglect their spiritual being. This is the type of man, my dear brothers and sisters, that invested plenty in this world, but neglect to invest in the life to come. Amen. You know the wisest person? People who invest plenty in this world and invest plenty in eternal life. Amen po. Hallelujah, my dear brothers and sisters. This man says, I have many years to celebrate, but the Lord says, you foolish, tonight I will come and visit you and demand your life back. My dear brothers and sisters, katulad nga, just like as you have declared earlier, we want to live wisely. Amen po. And Psalms chapter 90 is perfect for all of us. Let's see what chapter 90 teaches us. Amen? It says in there that, Lord, you have been our dwelling place. 
throughout all generation before the mountains were born. Or you brought forth the earth and the world from everlasting to everlasting. You are God. You turn men back to dust, saying, Return to dust, O sons of men. For a thousand years in your sight are like a day that has just been gone by. Or like a watch in the night, you swept away men in the sleep of death. They are like the new grass of the morning, though in the morning springs up new, but by evening it is dry and withered. My dear brothers and sisters, if the foolish man says, there is no God, Psalms chapter 90 is teaching us, my dear brothers and sisters, that there is God. That we need to know God. Amen. That there is God, that we need to know God. The name God is the first name that God or our Lord introduced to the people in the Bible. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, sabi niya dun. God, in Hebrew, is the word Elohim, if it's plural or El, singular, that means ruler of all. That means creator. That means all-powerful. That means almighty. Amen. And if God is like that, I want to be in His good side. Amen, church? If that is who God is, I want to be in His good side. By how? Believing that there is God. Accepting that there is God. Amen, church? He goes on to show here that God is eternal. That God exists from the beginning of time and He will exist when time expires. Time began when God created that six-day creation. But there, God, there is God outside the concept of time before that six days creation. Amen. And God will continue to exist at the expire of this dispensation, of this time. That's why it's called eternity because we no longer has to number years during that time. Time will expire during that time. Amen, church. And it goes on to say that like a thousand years is just like a few hours in the night to God. That our life, mankind, is just a dream. You know, when you dream during that night, five minutes, two minutes, even one hour, it's like reality. But wait till you wake up, that dream disappears. And that is our life here on earth. Irene is 92. Irene is 92. Who's the youngest? Jack Jack is one. But in between that, my dear brothers and sisters, life, according to James, is just like a mist. Alam nyo yung hamog? It is there in the morning and disappears when the day is heating up, my dear brothers and sisters. Amen. So if there is God, if there is this almighty creator of heaven and earth, you know what is the wise thing to do? Is to choose to live in God. To choose to put your life to God. Amen, church. You have no control about your life. So give it to the one who has control. Amen. In verse chapter 7 and 8, it says in there, We are consumed by your anger. 
and terrified by your indignation. You have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins in the light of your presence. Ano yung sabi na rito mga kapatid? God will hold us accountable of how we spend that short life here on earth. Amen. God will hold us accountable how we have spent that short life here on earth. And because God will keep us accountable on that small, short life that we have here on earth, it says in there, it is wise to live in His grace in mercy. Amen. It is only through the grace and mercy of the Lord that we are not consumed. The people of the Old Testament were consumed in Egypt. And the only reason that you and me can sit down and stand up and come to church today is because the grace and mercy of the Lord. There are people na nasa bingit ng kamatayan there are people that science says we cannot do anything. But we help in praying. And they go on to continue to live. And they are still living with us at the moment. I myself personally, hindi man siguro ganun ka dramatic. I myself personally have been a recipient of that grace and mercy of the Lord. And I use that awakening to recognize the reality and truth that it is only through the grace and mercy of God that I continue to exist. Amen. However, that short time you have here on earth, whether you will reach 92 like Irene or people who perish at an earlier time, the Lord will make you accountable of how you have been living your life here on earth. So be wise, my dear brothers and sisters, to seek God's mercy and grace. Amen. The verse 10, it says in there, the length of our days is 70 years or 80. If we have the strength, yet their span is but trouble and sorrow. For the quickly pass, and we fly away. It goes on to show, my dear brothers and sisters, that again, our life here on earth is very short. Our life here on earth, as per reality, according to the Lord Jesus Christ, there will be toil, there will be troubles, there will be struggles, there will be turmoil, my dear brothers and sisters. There will be pain, there will be problems. And all of us are experiencing them nowadays. Amen, church? Is there someone in here that can truly say na wala akong pinagdadaanan ngayon in one way or another? To be honest, life is not life if there are no challenge. If there are no trials, if there are no tribulations. But my dear brothers and sisters, the wise we want to be wise, it says in there. Then what shall we do? We will seek that our only foundation of satisfaction is our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, if you are having sorrow, troubles, struggles, problems, tribulations, it takes away your satisfaction. Amen. At work, things that make you sorrowful takes away your satisfaction. And in every situation and circumstance. But my dear brothers and sisters, if you make the Lord the foundation of your satisfaction, if you make the Lord the origin, the meaning of your satisfaction, the word of the Lord says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Satisfaction will never abandon you. Amen, church? Amen. Amen. If you don't want to be dissatisfied, if you don't want to be troubled, if you don't want 
na dumating sa verge na, Lord, hindi ko na kaya. Put our trust in the Lord. Because the Lord will never leave us nor forsake us. The Lord will always raise us up in His time. Amen, church. You know, yung kanta na one of our favorite song na All That I Am. Na, do we imagine that song? All that I am, all that I have, I lay them down before you, O Lord. Hindi lamang po yung aking tithes and offering, hindi lamang po yung aking love gift, hindi lamang po yung aking talent and skills, but it says in there, all my regrets, all my pain, all my damage. My dear brothers and sisters, we have a God that is not only after your blessing. We have a God that is not only after what you can give. We have a God who wants to give you because you will never outgive God. Amen, church. All my regrets, all my pain, all my fear, all that I am, I am giving it to you. And finally, my dear brothers and sisters, verse 12, Teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. This is a very powerful verse, mga kapatid. I cannot put a stamp of emphasis enough that this verse is very important and I encourage each and every one of you na we do not just memorize this verse. We do not just meditate this verse, we do not just understand this verse, my dear brothers and sisters, people online, I encourage you, I strongly encourage you that from now on, let this be the verses that makes the foundation of how you live your life from today. Sana ang mga salitang ito, ang gamitin natin, ang i-apply natin sa buhay natin. Kung papaano tayo mamuhay mula sa araw na to, mga kapatid. This is, this should be the building blocks of how we live our life. Dahil hindi, ka, hindi mo ipinapamuhay ito, mga kapatid, then you are a foolish man. Amen. Sabi natin, Moses wrote this, and Moses, just like you and me, is very much aware, mga kapatid, na hindi ko na maibabalik ang araw na to. Amen, church. I can not return the time that is spent today. Amen, church. The time that is spent today will become history. The time that I spend today, meaning I have shorter time to live. Amen po, church. Do we agree? As days pass by, our time to live becomes shorter and shorter. And the caveat is, we don't know how short it is. But rest I know that our life every day becomes shorter and shorter. Amen, church? Every day I have fewer days ahead of me rather than behind me. Amen. And my dear brothers and sisters, teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. I pray that this should cultivate, this should apply the heart of wisdom in us. To live wise, my dear brothers and sisters, is not just trying to increase the strength in me. Living wise is increasing my faith to God day by day. Amen. 
Because Hebrews 11.16, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Because everyone who comes to Him must believe that He exists and that He reward those who earnestly seek Him. Amen, my dear brothers and sisters. Living wise is growing daily in dependence to God. Hindi po yung independent ako sa aking sarili. You know, John chapter 15, Jesus said, I am the vine and you are the branches. Apart from me, you cannot bear much fruit. And the Lord says that it is for your good that you bear much fruit. Because if you bear much fruit, the Father will glorify you. But if you do not bear fruit, it says in there, you will be cut off. And you will wither and you will be Burned, sabi niya doon. Isasama kayo sa mga susunuging panggatong, sa mga susunuging mga damo na kinuha. So my dear brothers and sisters, living wisely is knowing that one day I'll be gone. Living wisely is knowing that one day the Lord will call me home. Amen, church? We'll all be gone one day. You and me will all be gone one day. That is the reason why that we prepare this youth. Because we'll all be gone one day. Amen, church. Yes, there might be pictures of us. Facebook might, might uh, give out picture memories of us from year to year, time to time. There might be stories of one or two with other people. There might be other remembrances, my dear brothers and sisters. But knowing that all your legacies here on earth will be forgotten, but the question is, what is your state in the afterlife? The word of the Lord says, there is a resurrection. Amen. Amen. And if you are living a foolish life here on earth, you will resurrect in the eternal suffering and punishment. But when you live righteously with wisdom, you will resurrect in the presence of God. Amen, church? So there is a resurrection. Where will you end up is dependent if you apply wisdom while living here on this world. Amen po, my dear brothers and sisters. All these things, mga kapatid, that I think, no, don't get me wrong, we have the same mind. We have this conclusion. Katulad nyo, katulad nyo rin ako. Na I can see the importance of the future. That I can see preparing for the future. That I can see preparing for old age. That I can see preparing for health care and Medicare of the future. But while I prepare for that, I pray that Lord, teach me to number my days that I may apply wisdom. Lord, help me realize that time is short so that I can live rightly, mga kapatid. Amen po? And that's what matters. Amen. What matters, my dear brothers and sisters, is how do we live our life here on earth that glorify God? So family members, see your our friends, our loved ones, colleagues, if you are tuning in with us, people online, mga kapatid, my question is, how are we living our life up until this point? Are we applying wisdom in living our life up until this point? Are we a gambler that the stake is very high? And we know that if we look at the odds, 
we have no way of winning. And still, we keep on living a foolish life the way that we want. My dear brothers and sisters, I pray that the Lord will teach us to number our days that we may apply that heart of wisdom. Can we invite back the music team? Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Let's stand up, church. It's anniversary, amen? amen. So we ought to be happy, amen? amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Those words should encourage us to be happy. Amen, church. Because there is possibility to be saved pala. Amen. The bad thing is, the Bible teaches and preaches about everything. And we do not have opportunity to be saved. But glory to God in the highest, because we have the opportunity and privilege to be saved. Amen po church. So, as the music team, Hallelujah, no? As the music team prepares, my dear brothers and sisters, I always ask myself this question. But today, as we celebrate our church fifth year anniversary, I ask you also, and people online, how am I living my life? Am I spending my life on the things that matters to God? Am I seeking God's mercy and favor daily in my life? Am I seeking ultimate satisfaction in the Lord and in the Lord only? So my dear brothers and sisters, let's worship the Lord. Let's talk to the Lord. Let's ask the Lord, Lord, what does this message mean to me? When you say that, teach me to number my days, that I can gain a heart of wisdom. My dear brothers and sisters, life is too short. Life is too short.
in every circumstance. No one to go back, Lord. Praise the Lord every day of our the lives. Way I used to Let's continually praise His worship, the Lord. Let's apply wisdom. I want to go back, Lord. By not going back to the way, to the way used we to used to live. Before you rescue me. I will not stop till every tribe and nation bows before you. Cause I will not stop. convicting you to start living wisely if the Lord is convicting you not to go back to the way we used to live I want to usher you in the front I want to usher you in the front and we will pray with you in the midst and in the intercession of the Holy Spirit the glory Anyone who is in need of prayer, arise, arise. Anyone who is in need of prayer, lift up your eyes to see. Anyone who is in need of refreshing, Lord, I just want to be refreshed. And I am convinced, and I feel that this anniversary is a perfect moment to be refreshing you. Come that we may pray with you. Kung lewat kong nangangailangan ng kasal, prayer of forgiveness, prayer of repentance, prayer of deliverance, prayer of healing, prayer of restoration. Sino po ang nangangailangan ng prayer? We invite you to come in front The name of the Lord be praised. The name of the Lord be praised. The name of the Lord be praised. Oh, Rabba Shikia Rabba Sakat. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Lord, in the way I used to live, the way I used to live. Let the people of God says on top of this their voice, Hallelujah! 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 Palakpakan natin ang Panginoon, Church! Hallelujah! 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 Hallelujah, Lord! Praise you, Jesus! Hallelujah! 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 Once again, blessed and happiest 5th year anniversary. Magpatuloy po tayo. Amen. Amen.